I don't know if it's the uh, ultimate wine game, but we, we try to be in the head of, of, of someone looking at an auction catalogue, uh, seeing old vintages and not necessarily being used to be exposed or taste to these old vintages. And so we try to, to bring him to Chateau Latour. And, and, and how do we do that? You know, you, you, we're going to draw vintages at random and we are 12 around the table. We're going to draw 12 vintages and every one of us will go down in the cellar with our cellar master, pick a bottle at random, come back up, open it with our cellar master, helping or not, depending. On, and this tasting it and deciding what he or she wants to do with it. You know, should we decant it, should we not, how long in advance? Uh, what's, what's also a big question mark is what vintages are going to be drawn. This is where we start. So if you want to follow me, this is the first step, please. This is the main room. You can see the, the cellars are behind, the vineyards are here. And here we have the four hats, the four baskets. Each of them has 12 vintages. And so each of our guests will pick, will draw a vintage. So for example, here, I'm picking 1865. Wow, that's a, that's a top, top vintage. I wish this is picked tonight. Then you take one of these little, little basket and we go down together in the cellar in the 1865 lot. Okay, here I come, still with my empty basket in the old bottle cellar of Chateau de Tour. Eighteen sixty-five. Here it is. We have nine bottles left only, and I'm picking. You can see these old bottles are incredible. The, the, the end of a bottle are uh, handmade glass. Some are not really perfectly round. It's just an incredible piece of history. So, picking one bottle, we come back here in this room and open it, taste it, and decide what they want to do with it. They want to decant it, if yes, how long in advance, if they want to let it as such, if they want to decant it and put it back in the bottle. And once, once the vintage is, is, is decanted and is well taken care of, then we're going to bring it to dinner. And at dinner, we're going to, to serve all these 12 vintages total blind. No one knows the order. Every participant knows that one of the vintage is the vintage they pick, but that's all they know. And the game starts there. It's a totally one reality program. We're not hiding anything. And, and honestly, today I'm a bit stressed because I don't know what's going to come out, but it's, it's fun. And I hope you know, all the participants, mainly uh, wine uh, professionals and, and wine critics, will, uh, you know, will enjoy the, the exercise. Well, the participants tonight are first friends of us who, who, who have been exposed to, to Latour vintages for many years, so they, they, they also have this this capacity to judge the, the bottles and to bring uh, 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 interesting perspective and, and comments and tasting notes. Uh, some are professional wine critics, uh, a few wine importers uh, in, in Hong Kong and China, uh, some friends from, uh, from Christie's obviously, uh, and also, it's a very small group. Hi, I'm Paolo, Paolo Pong from Hong Kong. Um, I'm the managing director of Altaya Wines. It's a fine wine merchant uh, based in Hong Kong. Uh, big fan of Latour, obviously, and a very good friend of the, of the Chateau. Uh, we're here tonight because uh, we're, we're doing this special crazy dinner. Hi, I'm Simon Tam. I'm head of wine for China for Christie's. And I am in the heart of Chateau Latour. Oh my God, look at this. You know, I have never been here before and I have no idea what I'm going to find. And in fact, <laughs> I'm not sure if I should move around a bit because there are some extraordinarily valuable bottles around me. 1913, 1863, 1865, 1912. Well, I'm, I'm going to be very greedy. I'm, I'm not going to pick anything young. You know, no, none of the 2000 or 82. Uh, 61, I'll be slightly disappointed, but let's say 45 will be the younger, youngest vintage I want to draw. 
Perhaps um, 29 will be, will be a good alternative, maybe 1900, but ideally something from the 19th century. Let's say uh, 1865, uh, 1870, if this is part of the, the range. Um, something exciting, something old. 1910, I mean, this is just an absolute liquid treasure. Um, 1920, 1938, I, this, this may just be a year, but you know, so much happened in a year and so much happened all those time thereafter, these ones were produced. And I don't know whether the winemakers or the grape pickers at those point who picked the wines in 1887 realized that today um, somebody from Christie's who lives in China would be here saying, my God, it's 1887. There we go. Here we go. Oh, I know this one. Can I change the nine to, to an eight, perhaps? Instead of 1971, I'll get the 1871. Or maybe the 21. The, the seven looks like a two to me. There we go. Well, there's the choice of bottle, an imperial. Maybe I'll take this. No, I can't. Okay. Looks good to me. Okay, here we go. It's got Chateau Le Tour on it. Ooh. Okay, all right. See you soon. I'm not telling you yet. Ta-da! Right. So I guess I'll grab one of these. I guess you want to know. 1983. Delicious vintage. Everybody prefer 82 for its power and depth and richness, but 83 is pretty fine. Lots of elegance. We shall see if anybody can pick it later. Including me, that is. <laughs> All right, let's, let's get it up. Okay. Shopping, bag full. All right, nobody can take a peek. It's amazing all these old bottles here. Ah, okay. Wow. This must have been recorked. Well, one thing we know is it's definitely real. There's no fake one in this uh, in this chateau. Yeah, I, I wouldn't decant this now. I, I would what? just, before, just ma before, maybe maybe a half an hour half before an hour. Okay. before it's being served. Half an hour. Okay, Trebon. What do you want we, we do? 
I think um, I think just open it just before pour it just before serving. Just before serving. I don't think we should decant it. Okay. I think just leave and then let, just it, let it let it grow in the glass. Okay. Oh, this is the moment of truth. I'm dying for the 1929. I think that works. I hope it's not 2000. I'm so psyched. I just got the kill of vintage. Woo! Wait till you see it. That's 45. The victory vintage. Hmm. This is incredible. Well, look at these sellers. Wow, top of the charts already, 61, more 61, bottom of the charts, 1980, 1911, ah, here's mine, 45. Let's see, I gotta pick a bottle. What should I take? Eeny, meeny, miny, no, I'm gonna take, this one's looking good to me. I hope it doesn't drop. Let's look at the color. The color on that. See, look. Beautiful. God. This is like nectar. Look, you can see the sediment. And look at the punts. <laughs> Means it was probably hand blown. I don't know. That's fabulous. Score. Put this in here. Maybe I'll take another one just in case. <laughs> okay. Can't wait to try it. Come on, baby. Can you see? I like, your, I like the way you concentrate the watch. 45. Look. There it is. 45. Magic. The victory vintage. Just think this. When this was picked, think of the war, man. Just over. They say that the, the vintage was picked by women because all the men were away at war. Really? Oh. Perfect. Yes. Oh. Looks perfect. Are you stressed? I think it's fabulous, it's perfect. And I'm going to see. Let's see how it is. Smells good. When was it recorked? Doesn't say. I mean, I'd like to. Moi, je veux décanter. I'm shaking. So exciting. Please. So I'm just taking taking it till a little bit of the sediment comes through. Don't worry, I can see, mate. Bring it, yeah. Bring it's it fine it's still, exactly. it's fine. Uh -huh. Now. Okay. Oh. Let's, let's the Look at that. Whoa, I will, don't worry. What smell? I can tell you already, it's like mushrooms, like white truffles. And then fruit. Oh. It's, yes. Let's see. Look at that. This is in the morning, I'd put that on my toast. Oh, uh. mm. Try it. Uh, even with the sediment, yeah, you get the tannins from the sediment, but the fruit, yeah, c'est frais, c'est parfait. The, the bottle is perfect, yeah. Perfect. It's so fortified. Dark chocolates, mint. That's a super bouteille, ça. I'm a happy super camper. Bouteille. Super. The 1945 Latour won't be drunk for another couple hours. So I'm going to leave it with the glass top in it because I don't want it to get too much air. I don't like over aerating these old ones because they can go away like a genie, like just a puff of smoke. So I think this is going to be a beautiful. 
beautiful bottle. Can't wait to drink it. Well, they sold that to you know, yeah, and the is borrowed up with the plots of it. They just kind of went out a little bit later. It was really a shock. It's a heavy day. It just had its day. That's going to be impossible to find. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, fresh, clean. Look at the color, it's like rosé. I have a slight preference for wine number one. I find the, 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 the first wine to be a bit more um, intact in a way, even though the second intact. one might be, might be richer, but I quite like the, the, the balance of, of wine number one. Slightly cheesy in the end, but but I thought it's it's interesting like that and surprising to see a wine of such a, a light color to be still fruity. The the first one is is amazing, so light colored, but like Paolo was saying, so lively, fresh, <coughs> and there's this pure fruit in it still, and it tastes different than let's say wines from you know, last century. I'm thinking more 1880s because of that sort of in weird raspberry, sort of intense fruit, light color, bright sea still alive. And then the second wine was more typical of wines, you know, post Phylloxera, maybe 30s or also I was thinking like 17, something like that, where you're getting the VA and the mushroom. And, but, uh, you know, fascinating mushroom. wines. There's been probably three generations of um of uh, winemaking advances before the first one was out, uh, before the first one was made, um, pale but the acidity really carries it very very nicely. Um, love the aromatics on it, very very nice, very gentle, very savory, very exotic, and, and long. It's not a big big wine, far from it, but it's very long and linear, like a stealth form, it just hums along, um, and it's not fading in my glass. But then again, I'm not working it; it's still got a fair bit going. Oh, very very pleasant. Um, Amazing color as well. Yeah. Um, pale as it might be, it's, it's a, a pretty serious watery rim around it. Mm -hmm. it's, and there's no sediments in mine. I know it's deep in decanter, but there isn't a fine dust of any sort in it. Um, how old? No idea. Right here. 1893 is vintage number one, right. and the second is 1919. Uh, 19. 19. 19. I, I think I think there is a big sort of time tunnel jump, last two and these two. Um, they starting to really taste like claret, mature claret. Uh, I think that much is that. I think the aromatics are completely different. Um, I, I, I like pain. Uh, I like number three a lot. Um, I, I think I think it's really wonderful, tight and restrained. It's got a lot of discipline. Number four, I have no problem with volatility. I mean, some of the stuff that I've been drinking. Um, compared to this, um, it's, it's a little bit more welcoming, but I also at the same time find you're taking your comment about attendance, but I find it just a little bit too buff compared to the, the weight and the, the richness of the wine. Uh, for me, I like number three a lot, and um, I think um, they're probably, I mean, Charles, I'm learning from him every day, but I, I'm inclined to go and take a pick at something from the 20s, which Charles always say, uh, some of the great villages, da, 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 so somewhere in the 20s, um, um, because of this big jump, um, and in terms of color and development, so. I, I just thought that, uh, that it's true that the two wines seemed a lot closer together in age, maybe 10 years, and they had a lot of that same character, the, the dried mushrooms, the VA, the slightly matterized, thing going on to, I kept on thinking of the British Museum, you know, going into the mummy section, 
and just you know getting that sort of smell. You mean the and, palace? You yeah. smell the mummies. <laughs> you know? Not the not mummies in the English sense, but like the ones that have the gauze sort of wrapped around them. So, you know. So, anyways, it, old wines. I say the first one's 1920s and the second one 1930s. Um, I do prefer this pair to the first pair. Um, I find them to be more pleasurable on the palate. I find them to be more fruity. Um, number four was my favorite. Uh, I've consumed both. But uh, four for me was, was a pretty acidic wine, but still I found the, the, the pleasure in them. And, 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 and number three for me, that's got too much uh, of that shoe polish and, and paint character, which I didn't enjoy as much. So I, I, I would say that number four is a riper year, like most of you have said already. Uh, I would put this in the 30s, 34, 37 would be my guess. Um, three is not that far away, so plus or minus 10, but... 181897, oh. and, and wine number four is 1909. Wow. wow, that was a good one. So it's going to be a big, a big shock. <laughs> After that, over the next yes. pair, <laughs> and this pair has to be put somewhere. So I decided to put there. It's like a true normand of a, of a of a dinner, and that was actually Florence's idea to put these two vintages together. So these vintages are almost the same color, and these two vintages have 110 years of art. Wow. What? 110 Ooh. years apart. Wow. So oh that's my Paolo Guest. Number Lord. eight is 1971. Wow. And the number seven is 1863. The oldest wow. vintage. Wow. Oh, oh my Lord. Number seven. Number seven. seven. Oh, he's the oldest. Wow. 1863, which is really. Oh, my guess was only 100 wow. years apart. <laughs> <laughs> 1863. Three. Wow. And we had the 1863 in New York in yeah. 2000. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing to have 80, uh, 150 year old bottles in such a shape. Yeah. Mm. It's it's pretty large. But then I'm just thinking it could be where it's a vintage that uh, is very, very uh, youthful and rich. And just the 10 in my mind, I just keep on thinking 59, but. Um, you know, maybe I'm wrong on that. And I thought that uh, that uh, nine was more like uh, 62 or something. So anyways, I, I think both wines are absolutely fabulous. Uh, I prefer 10, but you know, who, who cares? They're, they're both fascinating wines, showing the different styles of the tour. One, the nine being that beautiful, elegant, perfumed, uh, refined Latour and then the other one is the more powerful and rich style. Anyways, two fabulous wines. I f find this pair to, the mo to be the most perfect pair uh, so far um, in terms of drinkability. I mean, nine is, is just perfect. I, I find it to be a bit more mature than what James and Jeannie uh, have guessed so far. I, I, I believe it can be back to the 20s, maybe even a 29. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to guess 21, 24, 26, or 28, but I think somehow it reminded me of the, of the 29. <clears throat> Which one? <laughs> number nine, number nine. 10 is quite a bit younger, but um, if I remember correctly, the 61 source from this cellar is undrinkable. It's so youthful that it needed at least four to five hours of decanting. But, I mean, that's why I asked James earlier on whether this could be his wine. Um, I'm not going to guess 71 again because it <laughs> came out already. You had 71 as well. <laughs> <laughs> so I think this could be the 45. But two perfect wines. Completely, completely um, um, uh, classy. Absolutely class act, and uh, I, I think they are quite, quite, quite a few years apart. I'm mean, kind of go with what Michelle suggested, which is 20s, and then sort of something more contemporary, 50s. 
um, exactly which year, um, not 71 Palo, sorry, but uh, <laughs> um, love, the, love the density in uh, tan, love the, the, the density with the linearness, um, and just a lovely salty mineral tang that you can perceive on the end. Um, number nine, um, a, a, a hint of burgundy like uh, in its uh, aromatics and its texture. Beautiful, very, very elegant, completely, you know, I think we talked about masculine and feminine, I think there's a bit of both here. Um, lovely, thank you. It's funny because someone said at some point it could be 70 and 82. And who said that? It was a sort of a before oh. we started the round table. Wow. <coughs> and 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 this uh, yeah, so it's not it's, it's the 82, yeah. 82 uh, and it's funny it's not it's, it's, it's not at all 70 and 82 no. but <laughs> 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 so I had the chance to, to <laughs> taste the 82 uh, often and I was always trying to rem to refer to with what is the 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 older vintage that would could look like 82 and. And there's a vintage that has bottle variation and could be so stiff and tight and, and so true? not 82. And sometimes some bottles are closer to, mm -hmm. for me, to the 82 style. Mm -hmm. It's only one vintage like this. It's the 1970. So, yeah. wow. And bottle number 10 is 1970, wow. more in the 82 style mm -hmm. yeah, for me, yeah, yeah. which is delicious. You said it could, could drink it and drink it and drink it exactly like the 82. You could sip a bottle. A great, a mm. classical wow. Ball. And some 70 so bottles are, are more like, you know, like some, uh, as Gaia would say, John Wayne style, you know, a I'm bit sure. more. <laughs> oh. Yeah, we opened two bottles. This is a delicious way. bottle of 70. Mm. Yeah, I agree. More on the accessible side, sweet side. Yeah, yeah. And as you all mentioned, uh, uh, the n number nine is a different category, different winemaker. You said 20s. It's not 20s, but it's close to the winemaking of the 20s. It has not changed a lot in the style. Um, it's 1947. Oh and it's wow. a good bottle of yeah. 1947 oh, at okay. Lato, which is not necessarily a very, very uh, oh. prominent vintage. Oh. And it's a very good bottle of 47. Mm. Yeah, what a About tasting. Is, what what really struck me was that we tasted these amazing old wines that, that people went down into the cellar. And you know that that's the best shot that these wines have because those bottles have never moved. It's all about provenance, meaning the wines were always in the cellar. And the wines like the 45 and the 61 were amazing, 100 points. Then there were other things, weird vintages that I'd never had, things from the 1800s that are beautiful. And I think that that's the most interesting thing, is thinking you're drinking history, but history right from its birthplace. That's, that's, that's the great thing about this tasting. I enjoyed immensely the, 40, the last four wines. I mean, 47, 70, I, I wouldn't have guessed it uh, if you serve it to me another 10 times. Um, 61, 45, uh, I fortunately tasted this pair side by side uh, uh, a few times. Um, but I mean, <laughs> sorry, Jansis. Jansis. Um, but forty-five from from this cellar, it, it has to be the best forty-five uh, uh, Latour. Honestly, sixty-one for me is still relatively young. Uh, it still needs plenty of time. But overall, the the perfect wine of the evening was indeed forty-five. Eighteen ninety-seven, by far my favorite wines. Um, it's easy to love a 61 and a 45, who doesn't? But, you know, you don't, you don't get 1897 very often. Uh, 1971 was another really, really nice, classy uh, Latour sort of wines. And again, um, fame, vintages are kind of predictable, but I think there's a lot of great diversity here. Absolutely tremendous, but uh, really just, um, my God, what a hell of an experience, really. This is, I mean, guys, just, this is a once in a lifetime treat to do a tasting like this. Very humble. So we, 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 draw, we drew from 1863 to 1985, was the youngest. And that, that's what we're going to put at auction. We're going to put this big, big, big bracket of vintages uh, coming from uh, great provenance, but still being, still with this uncertainty of bottle variation anyway. Better to be brutally honest 
never completely eliminate bottle variation. This will always exist and this is fun because all of us have tasted already some 70, some 45, some 61 and we can we can have five, six, seven different uh, tasting notes. I mean, we, we're, not, we're not in the standardized, right. no, it's not a standardized exercise. This is still, you know, and if we taste them blind, it's even worse because I mean, <laughs> bottle variation plus remembering exactly what they taste like makes it very difficult. 1990, 1909 are a bit touchy, 1893, 1897, but they all seem to be maybe not fully in 1893. Uh, they all seem to be pretty much in their juice. 1947, compared to 1947, we had a good bottle. We had a very good bottle in 45. 61, maybe not the best, but normal. <clears throat> 71 was excellent, thanks to Paolo. And this is the history of, a, of an estate. You have ups and downs. I mean, there's no reason to hide, you know. We some, some, in some cases, we know exactly why. Uh, vi vi vineyard management practices, vinification practices. Some, some case, some case. In some cases, we're not too sure why it, it's like this, um, but we have to accept it, and we have to accept also that we're not. Sure, we we can't gather all the elements and all the information on these old bottles. Mm. We would like to have them. We, it's not available, so we have to accept it. I'd like to propose a toast to. Frederic and Florence for a fabulous Merci. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Merci. Cheers. Nice to have you guys. Thanks for coming.